Hello, and welcome to the most excellent musical monster jam. My name is Eddie Rocks, and you are watching the show that focuses on local talent here in Savannah and across the coastal empire. This week, we're going to meet Josephine Johnson. Now, Josephine Johnson just moved here a few months ago, and already she's written a song about the Waving Girl. Now, that is embracing the culture. That's right. This lady is taking full advantage of the creative environment here in Savannah and the vibrant music scene. So let's go ahead and join her and Will Griffiths at her house here in historic Savannah. Hello, folks. It's been a while since we've seen you. My name is Will Griffiths, and I'm with the most excellent musical Monster Jam. And this is Josephine Johnson here with me. How are you doing, Josephine Johnson? I am well, Will Griffiths. How are you? I'm good. I love your name, and I like the way it just kind of rolls. It does the roll thing. It's you like Joe Joe, Joe, you know, Joe, two O's. It's very good. So you're a guitar player, a singer, songwriter. Tell us about yourself, and tell us where you're from. Ah, okay. Well, I grew up in a small town in Indiana called Greentown, and um, I moved here to teach. During the day, mostly I teach music, and gotcha. then at okay. night I write and sing. And play music. And play music. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Okay, and where are some of the places that you play at when you do go to play music? Okay, um, Fiorua out in Richmond Hill, um, Tubby's Tank House out in Thunderbolt, and where else? Oh my goodness. Oh, Bowtie Barbecue. Okay, well, now that we know where you play, tell us how you got started playing music. Uh, I had no other choice but to play music. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Your parents in, beat you, or what? what no, was the deal? no, no. There was no violence. There was no violence. Okay. Um, just as a, as a kid, I was always very interested in writing, and I always sang, and so I had like pages and pages of poetry. I mean, poetry. did your mom did your mom play? Did your dad play? No, that's the weird thing. Like, I'm the musical outlier in my family. Nobody else. How many people in your family? I have a mom, a dad, and a brother, and then... Well, we know you have a mom and a dad. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, I could be an alien. Yeah, it could be. You <laughs> could be an I alien. Okay, like go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and then I would have two stepbrothers that, um, and a sister that live in Atlanta. Very cool. But Very I'm cool. the only, like, musical one. So you just wanted to play music, huh? I had... I don't know. I just... I, I had to. And after I had, like, figured out I have these, these words and this poetry... Um, I started to play the guitar, and then I taught myself as much as I could when I was in high school. Yeah. And then I took more lessons, and then I just kept playing and singing, and I did open mics, and I just kept going with it. So, so what other instruments do you play besides guitar? Is it the guitar the main instrument, or are you... Well, um, guitar and ukulele. Right now, ukulele is kind of my main instrument. Yeah. Because it's little, it's easy, it doesn't hurt my fingers, you know, it's fun. Um, piano, and I sing, too. So. Well, when you, uh, your songs, how do you come up with your songs when you do this songwriting process for you? Because everybody does it different, so you tell us how you do yours. I know, it, it, I think it's different a lot of the times, every time it's different. I wrote one recently about Florence Martis, you know, the waving girl. Yeah. So I just imagined what it would be like to be Florence. And so I went down to the waving girl statue and hung out out there. And then I went out to Tybee Island. You mean like when she was alive or when she just froze there in time? Well, when she was alive. Oh, okay, go ahead. All right, go ahead. <laughs> no. <laughs> When she was um, when she was alive, okay. She and her brother they lived for a while on Cockspur Island out mm -hmm. there where that lighthouse is, the yeah. Tybee. So I went out there and I looked at it, and part of like those kinds of songs are really fun because I get to go to those places and experiment with oh, what would so it it's be inspirational. Like? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then other times I just have a really terrible day and I just kind of go and I do the the you know the 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 mental purging that you do when you write, and then you can take that and make that into a song. Sometimes it's fit to be shared, but other times it's not. I can, I can <laughs> definitely understand that. All right, so do you think that this, they kept this lady locked up? Do you think she wanted to stay? you think she was mentally handicapped? She in love with the brother? What do you think was going on? Oh, there? wow, that's a good question. You know, I'd never really thought about that, actually, but when you go out to Cockspur Island and you see the lighthouse that's out there, it's not very big, and like that little tiny island at high tide there's no land there. And I wondered that too, like at some point was there a place where she lived there with the brother? How did that work? There um, might have been more land and it washed away as the years went by though. Maybe, Maybe. I think. I, I don't know, that's a, that's a great question. According to our director, there wasn't though. Oh. Just so you know. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> there wasn't. 
<laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't, when I wrote this song, I, I imagined her more as someone who like pulled in and turned away from the world. You know, as she, I thought, so this isn't my little mind. I thought she fell in love with a sailor and he went out, he promised that he would come back and he didn't come back. And it so broke her heart that all she could do was stay out there on that island and her brother also happened to be there. But I, I think you're probably on to something here that there's probably much more to that story. <laughs> probably a lot to that story that we don't know, that's for yeah. sure. When you when you write the songs, do you write them on the piano first or you start on the guitar or do you have like a melody in your head or? Yes, to all of that. Yes, like, to all of that. Like sometimes the Florence Martis one, I definitely had the words and the melody first and then I went and I backward put that to the guitar. So that one was written with the guitar. And then other times, um, I have a couple of ukulele songs that I started, I found, oh wow, that's a great riff. Or, oh yeah, that's definitely a song. So I went with the feeling of how um, the chord progression, the feelings that that chord perfect progression suggested. And then I tried to find something to say about um, the way it made me feel, if that makes any sense. Well, that makes sense. Well, you have a lot of songs on YouTube, right? I have a couple, yes. Okay, well, tell us about some of the different songs that you have on YouTube. Okay, okay. okay. Um, one of the most recent ones that um, I posted is that Feather song. I um, I also live What's in... the Feather song? Tell us about the Feather the song. The Feather song? Yeah. Okay, well, this is a fun story. Okay. I spent some time, I actually lived in, I went to school in California, in Northern California. Okay. And they have organic farms there. And one summer I got to work on this great farm and um, it happened to overlook the Pacific Ocean. So one evening at sunset, I was hanging out, watching the sunset into the ocean and I see these beautiful um, iridescent blue feathers. There's some right up there on the, on the mantle. They're Stellar's J feathers, the most beautiful blue ever. And I was just thinking, gosh, this is amazing. How many people get to be here, literally on the edge of the, of the continent, I just spent a whole day doing like outdoor farm work, watching the sunset, and look, in this tree, tucked in this tree, um, was a Stellar's Day feather. So that feather song is like, I was there by myself, yeah. you know, so I was like, gosh, sure wish I had someone here with me, so I'll just write a song about it. <laughs> now if I was a feather, I would float within your view. Yes, if I was a feather, I would be, I would be iridescent blue. If I was a feather, I would twist and fall for you. Oh, if I was the sun, I'd illuminate you. you. So tell us some of the other songs. Uh, you have a song that's called, what, the monkey song? Oh. Yeah, um, that one is is pretty much about Edgar Allan Poe. And, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you like Edgar Allan oh, Poe? Oh, we love Edgar Allan Poe. Really? He oh, was yes. so ahead of his time. I know. Loving the shining thing Did you know that when they found him in the gutter in Baltimore, he was just returning from the South. He was like the very first uh, American author um, to begin a literary journal. So he should have had $1,500 on him when they found him like unconscious and incoherent in the gutters of Baltimore. He had given it away, hadn't he? I think, he, no, I think he had been robbed and beaten. Oh no. Yes, because a few days later he died. And when they found him, he wasn't wearing the clothes of a gentleman. He yeah, was, I heard that he really wasn't into money, though. But he, but he yeah. needed the money, though. He needed yeah. the money to start that journal. Like, he was really on the verge of something big. And I think that he had a lot of detractors that were like, 
e either either like random thugs came and beat him up, took his clothes and took his money, or you know he had a, he had a lot of people that I think were jealous of him, and he was really ahead of his time. And well, I, it could be either one. It could, it could, it, it could, could be or one. maybe he gave it away. I or maybe he gave I, it away. You know what I heard? I heard that he might have been a victim of cooping. Okay, wait. You have to tell me about cooping. I haven't heard about this before. Oh, cooping is where they kidnap you and they get you to vote at all these different places. And that was probably why he was wearing somebody else's clothes. They were trying to disguise him as somebody else. But he wasn't wearing any shoes either. So was he going and voting? Uh, they with couldn't him? find the right size shoes. <laughs> I imagine that sometimes he was afraid that maybe the muse would leave him. You know, like the inspiration that gave him the power, the creative force to do these things that nobody else was writing about. Um, I think maybe he was afraid it would leave. And so I wrote a song and it's called Monkey. And it's me imagining like a private moment in Edgar Allan Poe's head where he's kind of like, I can't quit this, so please don't quit me. And that's the sentiment of the song. The monkey on the back of the elephant in the room is that I can't quit you. And so that's what I'm imagining. That's a very deep saying. thought. <laughs> I don't know, or cooping, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, it's just, it's maybe, just, maybe it all ties in. Yeah, maybe it does. There you go. And what is your favorite work by Edgar Allan Poe? Oh, my goodness. Um, the, oh, the cast. The song by the sewer company that comes out around Halloween. Yeah, that one. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, the Telltale Heart, the Purloined Letter. Um, gosh, I have all of his works in a, in a book. I don't know that I have a favorite. Who introduced you to the music scene? How did you get tied in with the music scene here in town? Oh, um, well, really? It all goes yeah, back. Really? Really? <laughs> really? It goes back to Craig Tanner, and he runs an open mic at Abe's on Lincoln. And so I went to that, and I just started meeting different people. And then I met um, Dre, Dre Ghost. He does a lot of different filming of stuff and things in town. You probably don't know this. That was my old bar, by the way. What? Really? Yes, it really was. At Abe's on Lincoln? It used to be WG's. WG's? Yep. Used what? to have a piano in there and played the piano in there. Wise Guys? Is that what WG's did? No. I think it was Wonderful Guy, but go ahead. Oh, Wonderful Guy, Wonderful Guy. Yeah, go ahead. No, that, that's okay. I like, um, I like Abe's on Lincoln. That's my name. Abe's on Lincoln? Will Griffiths. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Very good. Okay, so you get, so that's how you that's how you got started. So you got started at, at Abe's on Lincoln. That's very cool. Yes, okay. yes, yes. And then um, I I reached out to the folks that do Savannah Songwriters, and Thomas Oliver booked me in December to do that out at Tybee Post Theater, and that just opened up a bunch of different doors for me. Um, and since then, I've met. I really like Britt Scott's music. I met uh, Rachel Shaner. She just did her CD release. She is pretty amazing. And yeah. then I'm just meeting different folks and. Gotcha. Doing so you stuff. you have a CD out? I do have a CD. And what is the name of your CD? What it's, is it? it's called Let It All Out. Oh, oh, come on, come on now. Lift your head, raise your voice. Let it all out, let it all out, let it all out now. Everything is all right. Whoa, oh, come on, come on now. Lift your head, raise your voice, let it all out, let it all out, let it all out now. Everything is all right. Oh, 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 oh. Well, tell us about the Tybee Post Theater when you played out there. It was great. Um, it was the last performance of the Savannah Songwriters series out at Tybee Post Theater, yeah. which is great. I mean, that is an amazing theater. Yeah, I heard it sounds really, really good. It is. Yeah. And the lighting is great. I mean, I can't say enough of, uh, wonderful things about it because it's really cool. Well, who played out there with you? Um, Royce Wendell, who I love, Ben Wells, me, and Thomas Oliver. So those were the, the four folks that, um, that played. And it's really fun because you get like five rounds. So you go through, you sing, each person sings their own song and then you cycle back through. So you only, you're only playing like four or five songs for yeah. the evening. It's great. I mean, it sounds, it's, sounds really entertaining. It was really fun. Yeah, good deal. So 
What do you what are your uh, what are your hopes to do with your music? What what plans have you got to do with your music? I'm I have new material and I want to record that. I want to get that out there. And I mean, truly, like every musician, we, I mean, we want I, to, I think it's great to hear your stuff when you record it. You know, what I'm saying? I, yeah. everybody loves hearing what you record. Absolutely, and I, I, I want to be able to. I like touring. I've done touring before. Yeah. I want to go back out and tour. I mean, if if I could do anything, truly, yeah, I would just be a musician, and tour and write and sing. You know, um, oh, oh gosh, um, Tedeschi and Trucks. Tedeschi oh yeah. Trucks, yeah. Right? That's like my gold standard. <laughs> well, that's a. That's, I know. Uh, I, I know. That's huge. That's huge. That's huge. It's not bad though. They're they're. It's not a bad thing. No. Know? So I, I think about them a lot. I'm like, one day, if I could just open for y'all, that'd be great. <laughs> well, we had another guest on our show named Erica Franklin. She loved Tedeschi trucks. That was her favorite. She used to cry when she saw them. I'm gonna check her out. I'm gonna look her up if, yep. if she. Cries at Tedeschi Trucks. She is in the same tribe. We are family. Well, I love them. That's well, there you amazing. go. So, what style of music would you call your music? Um, I guess contemporary Americana, kind of um, post folk. It has some rock going on with it for sure. But you know, my songs I, I draw from literature a lot for the inspiration. So yeah. it's kind of like nerd folk, maybe. <laughs> and other than the instruments you play, if you had a choice of playing any other instrument. Which one would it be? I would play the harp. I would play the harp. Yes, play I would. The harp. Well, mm -hmm. you need to get a harp. You could probably play the harp. I would. I would love it. I, yeah, I would play the harp. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to say to uh, your fans? Um, gosh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I have a YouTube channel, um, Josephine Johnson, on YouTube, and my own website is JosephineJohnsonSings.com. Well, I'd like to thank you for being on this week's show. Thank, Thank you very you. much. It's been Thank a pleasure. You. This has been a lot of fun. Okay. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that was great. Thank you, Will Griffiths, for once again doing another interview with one of our local musicians. And thank you, Josephine Johnson, for inviting us into your home. It was great to learn about your music and about your experience here in Savannah. And, you know, we're looking for more local musicians. And if you know a local musician or you are a local musician and you'd like to be on our show, I'd like you to contact us through Facebook if you can. We are uh, the most excellent musical monster jam. We're right there on Facebook. We have a fan page and we can uh, receive your messages through Facebook and get back to you uh, ASAP. So please contact us through Facebook and we will get back with you about being on the show. So until next time, this has been Eddie Rocks. We'll see you soon.